What's going on guys? Today I'm going to show you how to install a Flowrite drain plug into a Phoenix boat. Now it's also going to kind of encompass any other style of boat, but I'll show you why a Phoenix boat in particular is a little bit different than others. So here's what the drain plug looks like. The red portion is the actual plug, the black portion is the housing. The actual plug itself is either going to be pushed out or pulled in via this cable with a little switch like this. You can rotate it to get it come in and out. It's really handy so you don't have to crawl underneath the boat and put the plug in, take the plug out if you're older or whatever. And these are honestly just kind of hard to get to. You hit your head on the prop, whatever, you're getting real low on these boats. And then in my case, it sits on a lift about 99% of the time. So it's impossible to get all the water out of the bilge if anything gets in there. So having this will be nice to get all the water basically out of the bilge so you don't get any mold. But the reason that the Phoenix is a little bit different is this adapter right here. That's because the Phoenix drain plug is larger than the normal size. So you can't just put this in and line up with the hole in the boat. The hole will be too big. So you have to get a plate here, which is actually made by Catch a Limit. Somebody took the time to basically CNC enough of these. So this is solid aluminum here. So basically these holes here and here are going to line up with your existing holes of your current drain plug. And then these holes are where the housing uh, is gonna line up to. So this is actually gonna be rotated like that slightly at an angle to match up with these two set screws. Now, one thing that is nice about this, if you can see in there, they threaded this as well. So if you're somewhere and this broke for some reason, the cable gave it up or whatever, you're on a trip, you can't go back and get the parts to make that work. Uh, keep your existing drain plug in the boat and you can just screw it in like normal. So that's really nice. I like that because I like having a fail safe thing. You go on trips or something. Last thing you want to do is my remote drain plug broke. I can't fish. So I like that they kept it simple and gave you a backup for that. So before we get into it, it's pretty simple, but the things you're gonna need is like a drill, Phillips head or a screwdriver, whatever you wanna use, some isopropyl alcohol, and then some adhesive. And this is 3M4200. Now I wanna stress that you want to use 4200. They have 3M5200, but that is non-removable. That is permanent. Once you use 3M5200, that's pretty much going to be part of your hole until you're grinding it off or something like that. So use the 4200. That way, if there ever is an issue or something in the future, you can at least get this part back off. So coming around the back of the boat here, I'll show you inside the bilge just because I had to work on some pumps and stuff while I had the boat home. But this is the backside of the drain plug right here. Probably a little hard to see. But that's the actual plug itself that I'm touching right there in the screw in portion. So we'll go down here to the bottom of the boat. And here is your actual plug. So the first thing we're going to do is get the debris out of the way and unscrew that. And we're going to take these two screws out and then the new piece is going to go in here. But what I've read so far of people doing this prior is this is the hardest piece to get off because of the adhesive on here. So we're gonna see how that goes. All right, so pop these two screws out here. All right, we got the screws out and I'm gonna try and take my screwdriver and get it inside this housing and kind of use a little leverage to maybe get started. Look at that, it came out way easier than I thought. All right, so there's your old adapter piece right there. I'll just scrape all this off underneath. All right, I got a putty knife here, and then I got a razor blade. We're gonna see what works better. Get this old sealant off here. I do believe this is gonna be the worst part. All right, we got the bulk of it off. Now we need to do a little bit more scraping here. Okay, we got looking pretty spick and span there with the razor blade. Now I'm going to get this cleaned up. I'll put some isopropyl rubbing alcohol on here, and then we'll go ahead and get the adapter glued on there. Now remember, if you do not have a Phoenix, this would be the time that you just go ahead and put your regular flow right piece in here. But since we have a bigger hole here than what is for the remote drain plug, we have to put our adapter plate in first. All right, now it's time to put our 3M4200 on around this hole. Uh, in an ideal world, you're gonna wanna use the tip, but this tube is a little bit older and it actually uh, 
blew out on the side here, so that's what I'm gonna be working with today. All right, that's probably not the greatest looking with the uh, hole in the tube, but it's gonna work. We're gonna press this on here, get a nice good fit. Just basically want this to be continuous here so you don't have uh, any spot for water to get through. And then we'll go ahead and put the set screws in. Once we get it all situated, we will wipe off the excess. This is a pretty snug fit, so I'm gonna actually line it up with this two by four and tap it in all the way to get seated. All right, we've got her driven in there, get the screws started, get them both started before we get them all the way home so they find the right spot. All right, got those tight. Now we're going to clean up around the drain plug, get it all nice and pretty, get that excess 4200 off there before it hardens up. It takes like 24 hours, I think, for this to set up totally before you're really supposed to put it in the water. So it's not like it's super urgent. It's not something that's gonna set up very, very quickly on you, but uh, it does start to get a little tacky after a while. Okay, we got all the big stuff off there. I'm gonna come back and clean this up once it dries up with the razor blade and get the rest of it off the actual gel coat there. But uh, we will move on to the next part, which is gonna be feeding the cable through here and putting on the actual plastic components of the remote drain plug. So we have your cable here. This is the end that's gonna actually attached to the remote drain plug. This is gonna be the end that's going to go to your snazzy little handle here. And then we have remote drain plug itself. Got this little foam gasket in here. Uh, you've got a little backer piece that goes on top of there. And you have the other half of the remote drain plug here, actual plug itself, and all the hardware you're gonna need for it. So looking at this little diagram here, basically we're going to run our cable through. First, slide this piece on, make sure you have that little gasket behind there and then uh, we will be able to actually screw this piece onto our adapter that we just put on there and then we'll, we'll assemble our drain plug and stuff like that so we'll start with that and uh, we'll go from there all right so we'll go ahead and put our cable in here bear with me i gotta do this one-handed but here is our drain plug down there so we'll feed that in that will have plenty of cable sticking out for us. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is slide this assembly on it. And then we're actually gonna have to put the drain plug itself onto this little piece here. All right, so we're gonna slide the plug on here. If you look inside here, it has like a Z shape in there. I actually put this together, I think it'll make it a little bit easier, but it basically matches the shape of this cable right here. So you need to make sure that you get this lined up with the groove that is inside here as you're tightening this down. All right, so once you get that tightened down, you'll be able to take this red plug and you'll actually be able to like torque this wire here. If, if it's not lined up in there, it'll kind of slide around, but you'll you'll feel it as you tighten it down. Uh, it'll kind of catch in there and you'll, you'll have control over that cable as far as twisting it. Okay, now we're gonna slide this in as so, and then you're gonna see you have like this nub on here and you're gonna make sure that is lined up in this little groove here, and we're gonna put a little cap on top of this so that this piece cannot move. So it's got a rounded out part that's gonna to go towards the back side of the plug, and we're gonna put our two set screws in there. Okay, now that's tied on there, so the next thing we're going to do is put this onto our adapter plate and then tighten it down. All right, so we're gonna push this up here, and we're gonna to have to rotate it, and then with the adapter that I have for the Phoenix, um, it comes with small bolts. So I went ahead and poked a hole already into the gasket so I can get my bolt started without too much issue. All right, that should be good on the actual drain plug here. So uh, next up, we will go up to the top and I'll show you kind of how I'm gonna mount it and uh, how we're gonna hook up the lever. All right, so as far as attaching the end of your cable to your lever here, it's going to have and out and an in. So on the back side, you're gonna have this piece that's gonna swivel. So I turn it out to the side here a little bit and we're gonna take this end piece and we're going to Z it up in there and then we'll lay it into this groove and it'll all come together. So hopefully this focus is decent on the GoPro. So we're gonna come up underneath it and it's gonna go in that groove and then you can kind of rotate it exactly around where it needs to go. So it gets in this groove here. So then we'll get this going here. Start to get this tightened down. And you just wanna make sure that you get the top and bottom of this plastic piece 
over this brass edge. How well you can see that. So you have like a lip up here and you have a lip down here. So you just want to get that on both sides of it so it's secured and then you can tighten that down. Now before I go and operate this, I'm gonna actually get a little bit of silicone lubricant and I'm gonna spray it on that O-ring uh, down at the drain plug so it has a little bit of lubrication and it's not dry. I believe Flowrite recommends Molly Coat. I will put it in the description to put on there, but I have some silicone spray right now that I'm gonna use just to get that started. All right, so the plug's out right now. And you hear that little snap noise. It means the O-ring is seated. And if you want to back out, let's do that right there. So, okay, so I got the version with six foot of cable. So you can see this is kind of what I have left over. I'm going to do a little finagling in here and try and figure out exactly where I want to put it. Okay, so here is where I ended up putting my remote drain plug, the little lever. You can see it's down here. So I have plenty of room to access it. It's right underneath my troll motor switch. Ended up just being the easiest spot for me. I just had like a metal plate here but it's a one and three quarter inch hole with a hole saw. So uh, it doesn't matter if you mount it in here, if you want to mount it in your actual fiberglass or this side over here, there's a lot of options you can do. But uh, that is just something that I did not want to do at this time is put you know that size of hole in the transom area on my boat just for this. So it seems to function well and uh, we'll put to the test on the water and it should make my life a lot easier at least uh, with the boat on a lift and stuff. So thanks for watching guys and hope this video helped you.